Okay, so we're looking at the, the sales order. And of course, in the sales order, we know what are the things it contains. Customer and material information, pricing conditions for each item, delivery dates and quantities, shipping information, billing information, things like that. You know, standard things that you would expect any in any sales document. So sales order here is an example where you, it's got some information from the customer master, some information from the material master, and of course, lots of information from the other masters that we discussed earlier, which are not shown here. But it's essential that it contains these four pieces of information, right? And uh, in fact, the very first screen, when you try to create a sales order, the first screen will come up with these four fields. That's what you enter first. And then it goes to the next screen where you enter the details of who's the customer, what's the material, what is the dates, etc., etc. Okay, uh, so we already know that these three things together define the sales area, right? So it's important for us to uh, specify the sales area before we go on and create the sales order. And of course, the system will make sure that you do that. Uh, it's also possible that sales orders could get created based on internet messages from business partners. There's, there's another route through which sales orders can get created within the SAP system. Okay, so you can base the sales order in one of these three, sales inquiry, quotation, or an outline agreement. You know, they, they use different terms for this. For example, you see the term contract. You see the term outline agreement, right? And then you also see the term scheduling agreement, right? They're all talking about the same thing. Uh, you know, maybe subtle differences, but the point is that there is some sort of a prior agreement and the sales order is being created based on that, right? That's what it's talking about. Or, of course, it's perfectly possible to create a sales order directly. Just enter the system and create a sales order. That's also possible. Okay, so it's not necessary that it must be the result of some prior document. It can just, out of the blue, you could create a sales order. Okay, so uh, assuming that in this diagram, assuming that we are creating a sales order based on prior documents, and this slide takes the example of multiple quotations, right? So let's say we have given a couple of quotations, quotation uh, to the same customer, of course. It's possible that we can combine those two quotations into one sales order. Okay, of course, certain conditions have to match that both those quotations should have some open items. They should still be valid quotations and things like that. If all of those conditions hold, then you can combine them into one single sales order and then send out an order confirmation to the customer saying this is it okay or alternately you could take one quotation which you know that presumably you submitted the quotation and the customer accepted it you could take that one quotation and break it up into multiple orders that's also possible just depends on what the customer wants to do okay so it's possible to take multiple quotations and combine them into one sales order or take one quotation and break it up into multiple sales orders. Either of those approaches so is fine. Yeah. The, the two quotations here are from the, from the same customer? Yeah, cust one, cust one. Oh, oh I see. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Obviously. Otherwise, you can't combine them into one order because the order has to go to only one customer. Okay. Uh, so, structure of a sales order. Just like all other documents that we keep talking about, uh, you know, purchase order, we spoke about the structure of the document. Uh, sales order, we'll talk about it, and then later on when we consider maintenance orders, we'll talk about the structure, a uh, production order, yep. If we have the same customer, but two shipping areas, do you have to create two sales order? Or no, 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 no. Mentioned in the lines? In the lines you can do that, yeah. Okay, so we'll be looking at lots of different documents and pay attention to the structure of each of the documents. Right, sales orders, purchase orders, maintenance orders, production orders. Uh, those are the four that come uh, to mind right off, okay? So be sure you have these pictures sort of in your mind. Okay, so the structure of a sales document, of course, a sales order, is it's got a header and it's got multiple items, right? So that's one item, this is another item. And as the diagram shows, within each item, you could have multiple scheduling lines, schedule lines. Okay, so that's what you're seeing here. You've got a sales order, Sold to party is this, ship to party is different. It's possible. You might have to ship to somebody other than uh, the party who placed the order. Uh, and then you've got the first one, you've got item 10, and that is required on 1st November. That's got only one schedule line. 
Okay. You don't have to specify a schedule line if there's only one schedule line. You just give the item and if you don't specify schedule lines, the system treats that as one schedule line. Whereas this item is for 50 pieces, but they don't want all the 50 pieces at the same time. They want 20 on 1st November and 30 on 1st January. Okay, so those are two schedule lines. Okay, now uh, schedule lines exist only on sales orders. Right, on the subsequent documents like uh, outbound delivery and a billing document and invoice and so on, there are no schedule lines. Right, because a schedule line here will become an item in a delivery document. Okay, so the schedule line exists only in the sales what order. Is the basic difference between a schedule line and an item? Well, this is one item. It's got two schedule lines. Okay? So this item for 50 pieces is just one item. Okay? That they want 50 pieces of this material. So you can say like schedule lines is just a breakdown of an item? Yeah. Yes, it is a breakdown of the item by the dates. Mm -hmm. By the dates required, right? So the quantities on the schedule lines will have to add up to the total quantity on the item. So item 20 is what? Is the our internal reference number for that? No, in the sales document you'll have, let's say you have five items. They'll just give the item number 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. Oh, okay. That's all. And if my, if my system is connected to my customer's mm -hmm. system, either both using SAP or one, I'm using SAP and my customer is using another one. Is it possible to link in that would be automatic or I, I have to create that sales order? Could be automatic. It depends on how you set it up. Okay. okay. Anything, all of these things are possible. I mean, if, it's, if it is a genuine business requirement, they'll have to find a way to do it, right? So it'll be there. That's not a problem. Okay. Uh, so individual items can be controlled differently in the sense that for each item, you could say, well, that's a uh, you know material item. It's a text item. Sometimes you could just have a text item on the sales order, or it's a free of charge item, right? Many times uh, you send out a sample, for example, to a customer, so it's a free of charge item. So for every item, you can indicate what type of item it is. Okay. So if it's a free of charge item, of course, the system won't calculate any price for it. Okay. Uh, so here we are talking about the. Uh, the customer says, I want this on day X, right? So now we have to figure out, can we do it? You know, can we deliver on day X? And the way that, the, that we do it in SAP is backward scheduling, right? We say, okay, that's the day on which the customer wants it. This is the amount of time it's going to take for me to transport it. This is the amount of time it's going to take me to load it. This is the picking time, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, assuming we already have it. Uh, you know, if it's in stock, can we meet that? Okay, so that's the backward scheduling calculation. Saying, you know, it takes one month to do this, one month to do that, five days to do this, and then today is this date. Can I still meet that deadline? Same as in manufacturing execution. Yeah, it's just a, just a regular calculation, backward the calculation. The items are different now because it's... Yeah, the components are different, but it, they're all lead times anyway. Mm -hmm. Right, time to do this, time to do this, time to do this, and finally you calculate and say, okay, uh, you know, has it gone beyond behind today? If so, you can't meet it. You know, if uh, everything has to be ready yesterday, then you can't meet the deadline. But otherwise, you can meet the deadline. If backward scheduling doesn't work, then of course you do forward scheduling. And say, we are here today. And if I have to deliver it for you, then it's going to take me X days to do this, Y days to do this, 10 days to do that. The earliest I can deliver it to you is on day X. That is forward scheduling. Okay. Okay. So in the sales order document, like in many other documents within SAP, uh, you've created the document, you try to save the document, but you haven't entered some important pieces of information, right? Some essential pieces of information, if you're not encounter, included, then the system will generate for you an incompletion log, right? Which says your document could not be, is not complete because you're missing A, B, C, D, E, F, right? So for example, you create a purchase order uh, and uh, let's say the, uh, the ship, the sold to party is missing or something like that. Okay. Or the required date is missing. And what information is essential, you know, what is considered as required information, you determine in customizing. Right. In customizing, you say, we can save an order with this kinds of information, etc. Right. So that could be, you can configure it depending on how you need it. 
Okay. Uh, you can either have it such that the moment this person tries to save the document, it pops up the incompletion log, or of course it can always be pulled up through the menu option edit incompletion log and then you'll see where, how complete the, the document is. Okay, This incompletion log is available in uh, sales orders as well as in delivery documents. Okay, Now clearly sales orders can have a link to MRP. By the way, what, what are sales orders called in MRP? Customer, customer independent requirements. Customer independent requirements. Right? Planned independent requirements and customer independent requirements. These are customer independent requirements. You've got a sales order, you've got to meet it. Right? So that's, uh, that is a linkage to MRP. Right? So you either fulfill the sales order via production. This is if you're doing a, you know, uh, if, if you have to ship it to order. If it's in stock, of course, you can, you can deliver it. Right, which means that you have to do raw material procurement, etc., etc. MRP will take care of that, or you could fulfill it via procurement if this item is a trading good. If it's a trading good, you'll just buy and sell it. So then you need to go through the procurement process to get the item. Right. So clearly, that is the linkage between the sales and distribution module and the MRP system. Okay. So customer independent requirements. That's what the sales orders are. Okay. So then we've got. Uh, uh, the transfer of requirements to MRP. So we've got sales and distribution and the connection is just what we saw. Either internal in-house production or external procurement. The same diagram really. Okay. Now, uh, in, a, in, in sales orders, before you promise a date, you want to check the availability. Right? ATP. Availability to promise uh, document. Right? And you invoke that using this small icon which is at the bottom of the screen when you when you do that. So you to create it, you do that, and uh, uh, the how the ATP is actually done is based on certain control tables within the system, right? You might uh, you might define the logic. Every company might want to define the logic differently, right? And you also within your company for different products, you might use different logic in terms of how you determine what is available, what is not available, right? So the control tables are what determine those kinds of things, right? And uh, an availability check occurs if the material requires an inventory check or if availability check is set in customizing for this transaction. Right? So in customizing you can say uh, in sales order processing you need to do an availability check. If that is the case then when you are running this it will do the ATP. Right? Or if the material is flagged as requiring an availability check before confirming then also it is going to do it. Okay. Uh, and availability check code is here in the material master. That's what we are saying here. And it's set in the sales and distribution page of the material master. Right. So from availability check, you can get the quantity that is available to promise, ATP quantity. And then the scope of the check, which is where all it checked. And also, which other plants have stock of this material. Right? So you might have checked only in storage locations of plants A and B, right? but you may want to find out if it's not available which other plants have it. From the ATP screen you can get that. Okay. So now assuming that the sales order has been properly created and saved, we are now ready to start the shipment process. right? And here we are looking at the steps in the shipment process. First step, of course, is to create an outbound delivery. Right? Once again, we, I just emphasize that this is a document. It's an outbound delivery document which initiates the shipping process. Against this document, everything else can take place. Okay. Now, uh, like we already said, if the item that you want to deliver is in a storage location that is connected to warehouse management, then you need to go through the picking step. Okay. So in the picking step, you actually create a transfer requirement to the warehouse and within the warehouse they'll create a transfer order, they'll go and actually get the materials, they'll confirm it, right? And then you'll have the material. You can then take it forward, packing and then shipping. Right? So that is the that process. So you pick it first, then pack it, and then post goods issue, which is the last step uh, in the shipment process. Okay? So you post goods issue. So uh, 
this is just the initiation of the process. Okay, this step is the warehouse management. This is just you know material getting the material ready for shipment, packing, and then doing the things. Finally, we post goods issue. Okay. So we are doing warehouse management first here because this is happening against a delivery. So we do the warehouse management first. If it's not against delivery, if it's just a, let's say a random occurrence or an unplanned kind of thing, then you will do it differently. Then you will do the post goods issue first and then you will initiate all the other operations. Okay, so it initiates the process, it creates the transfer requirements for the warehouse and then uh, here we formally record the stock change. Okay, so outbound delivery options once again uh, you can combine multiple orders into one outbound delivery, right? Yep. Uh, the screen uh, before is picking, packing, and planning all that optional. It says in the book it's optional. Oh, I guess it gives them service. Wait, which one? Which is picking and confirming, packing, planning, and monitoring, or transport? They're all optional. Yeah. Which slide are we looking at? Yeah, the one you just want. The this arrow. Uh, or, 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 or. You were just there. I or, think it, it, no, 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 forward, forward, forward. The thing that he or, said that if your, or, just if your storage location that is one. attached yeah. to your warehouse, if not, you don't need to create a picking. What did you say again? Say that again? You remember that he just said, like, if, if your storage location is in your warehouse... is under warehouse management. Yeah, then you need pick, uh, the picking process. If not, you don't need it, right? Yeah. Oh, okay. so yeah, picking is... Right, if it's not under warehouse management control, then you don't need it. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. Okay, so outbound delivery, once again, we can combine multiple orders into one delivery or you can break a del uh, one single order into multiple outbound deliveries right? of course this would be required if you have multiple schedule lines for the items right but even if you have for every item on the order if there's only one schedule line you can still break it up okay you can break it up and create multiple deliveries because that's what the situation may demand that you do that but of course you can combine uh, or split uh, splitting, of course, is straightforward. You can combine only if all of these things match. Okay, if it's all from the same uh, same shipping point, then you can combine them into one delivery. Uh, if the delivery date is matching, right, and if the ship to party is the same, then you can say, okay, I can combine. Obviously, you cannot combine shipments to multiple different parties and so on. So it's just common sense logic there. Okay, and also this uh, creation of outbound delivery can be online, which means you're doing it in the screen right then and there, or it could be a, some kind of a background process, right? So you may take a whole bunch of uh, orders that need to be shipped and then ask the system in the background to create all the outbound deliveries uh, and then it will create them in the background. Okay, so it could be a background process or an online process where you are interactively doing it. Okay. Uh, so structure of a delivery document it's simpler than the uh, uh, sales order document because it doesn't have schedule lines okay so you've got header you've got items so you've got the ship to party right there's no other sold to party and so on because the delivery is intended just for shipment and which are all the materials and how much to be shipped yeah so the delivery document is synonymous to shipping document right they, they both are the same yeah yeah right? that's true but the delivery document, the shipping document may be a document that you print and send to the to the customer, whether this is an you know, internal control document. Okay. Uh, so no schedule lines in this, only in the sales document, because sometimes in the questions they try to trip you up. So just remember this uh, carefully. Um, okay. So it's got, uh, many of these documents have different views, right? And most of the documents will have these three views. Overview is one sort of view in which you get all the information and then you've got the more detailed view of the header and the more detailed view of the items. Okay, So for many documents you'll have these three views, overview, header and 